Hi, Hi folks. folks, if you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist and we recently sold our suburban home and moved to a tiny cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dog, Jack Spaniels. In this video, join us as we explore Talisker Bay to see the stunning waterfall that falls from high up on the craggy cliffs to the beautiful beach below, plus lots of other adventures. Welcome to... Live in the Sky Life. Just wanted to say a huge thanks to all of our viewers and subscribers. YouTube have made this channel a creator on the rise, which is a huge accolade and something we can't believe this happened so early on for us. We just want to say a massive thank you. Yep, we're super excited about this, where our channel's got to already and where it could go from here. So we can't wait to share some more adventures from the Isle of Skye with you all. As we carry on, living, living the, the sky, sky life! life. <laughs> <laughs> What's that big orange thing over there in the sky? I don't know. What do we do with it? I think my skin's gonna fall off. Let's try and catch it. So we decided to try and catch it in the car. We're out on a little walk today. The weather is absolutely stunning. We had Storm Otto yesterday and now it's just calm and beautiful. We're going to the beach. And Jack knows it. He's <laughs> pulling my arm off. Anytime there's water involved, Jack gets very excited. We're going to Talisker Bay. Actually, me and Jack have been here before. We did a little recce on another day while you were out, but we thought we'd bring Gully down because it's so beautiful. Thought we'd take you with us as well. I'm excited. So we're just about to go past Talisker House and then we'll head down to the beach. No way of avoiding it. Let's do it. Well, this hasn't really worked. We've gone to the deep water at the bottom by the beach, but it's far too deep and far too fast. So 
we've already got wet socks and we don't want to get them any more wet. We've had a little discussion and we think we're going to try and paddle in February in three degrees, but it looks that amazing over there. Except for the intrepid. And we just want to show you how moronic we are. <laughs> how beautiful it is and how stupid we are. So enjoy because there may be some screaming. There will be some screaming. <laughs> You go first. Yeah, thanks. I can already tell this is a really stupid idea. I think it's going to be worth it. Oh, it's your idea. It's my idea. That's why you're going first. Oh, you're so brave. <laughs> oh, I'm blinded. I'm blinded by those legs. Scotsman, through and through. Go for it. Jack's like, I do this all the time. What are you greeting about? Do you enjoy that? Oh, well, that was refreshing. <laughs> it's worth pointing out at this stage that we knew we would be able to get safely back again as we'd carefully check the tide times and levels before coming out. We just needed to get our feet a bit wet to cross the river as the stepping stones were covered. Everyone knows a bit about geology. What might they be? Looks a bit like quartz. I'm not sure. It's cool anyway. Hey. Cool man, love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I like the Goonies Rock and I like the waterfall. So I'm gonna get a drone out now and uh, over here. I think it's lava, but there are no poisonous uh, poison seaweeds in the UK. So might not oh. be poisonous, but it's not very appetising. No. Oh. I'm gonna try a piece. Rip it now. Go once. Oh, okay. Ready? Uh, yeah. Oh, I feel like I'm eating jelly weed out of Harry Potter. Ugh. Oh. It just tastes like I'm having sushi. <laughs> well, oh no, I don't like the texture. I don't think that seaweed eating is for me. It didn't taste bad, but the texture was 
not very nice. No, not for me. <laughs> Safe to say, we're not particularly looking forward to this bit because it was very, very cold. I wouldn't say it was that warm. <laughs> but if the cafe is open in car bus, then I'll treat you to a hot chocolate as a reward. Let's do this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Here we go again. <laughs> I think I might stick to this bit because it looks a little bit shallower. We made, we made it! it. <laughs> yeah! We got very cold feet in the process and I may have gone in above my knee at one point, which was quite amusing. I didn't I'll tell you what, it was pretty scary at the time though, because I didn't know it was that deep, you couldn't see. But anyway, that was lots of fun, no, wasn't it? It was good. We knew we could get back because I last came here at high tide and I knew we weren't going to get cut off. I just knew we'd have to paddle through the river a bit. But, oh well, cold water paddling, it's supposed to be good for you, right? Well, definitely want a hot coffee now though. Get the blood circulating. Alaska is also famous for something else, but we can't remember what it is. guys the coffee shop was open so we got some hot chocolates to warm us back up our feet were so cold yes very 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 cold it's a lovely little coffee shop actually it's really really nice really good coffee as well so we'll be in there plenty this I'm is sure. delicious good yeah. salted caramel hot chocolate actually the last time we were here i was on holiday we were on holiday weren't we mm -hmm. this is the first time i've been as a resident i just realized that thanks so much to our coffee supporters these ones are on you and we've got lunch as well yeah some toasties to keep us going yep. and then after this we're heading back to the cottage and getting back to work yeah get we've, back to work we've got some more editing to do haven't we so, we've got a video to upload and we've got a video to upload for tomorrow cool never stops never so stops. cheers guys yep thanks for fueling the fire just stopped at this pier in Carbost. I wanted to check it out because I could fish here potentially. I read something online about it that says it's fairly good, so I'll give it a go. Also, check out this for the background. Looks fairly deep, which is good. Yeah, I'm going to come fishing here, definitely. This is ace. <laughs>
<laughs> we just had our friend Richard Rand who's going to help us to convert the buyer, as is our friend Ian, which is great of them and we really appreciate that. Thanks guys. But the first thing we've got to do is build a shed and we've decided to do it from scratch because there's so much stuff in the buyer that we have to find somewhere to put it. So we're building a shed. The reason for that is the weather conditions here are pretty crazy as you've probably seen in these videos. So we're going to make something that's quite substantial. This is the first stage in doing the work on the buyer. We kind of have to work backwards because the buyer is full of stuff. We've got loads of wood in there as well. So we can't start doing any work on that until that's all cleared out and that's going to be a big job. Yeah, and I'm going to be making a log store as well around the side of the buyer. I think I'm going to make it out of the racks or the back. There's some shelving in there, some quite sturdy shelving. It's a very exciting time for us. The house is amazing, but it was all built by other people, whereas this is a project that we are taking on. We have actually spoken to the Highland Council and we've had this okayed. So yeah, join us on this process as we make this place completely our own. Sarah, I know you're really looking forward to having your own little proper bespoke studio, aren't you? Yes, so much. <laughs> Space outside of the house where we can get on with painting and doing the editing and sending out all the Etsy parcels and stuff. So our spare room can actually be a spare room. There's no spare space in it at the moment. It's all full of boxes and everything and Sarah's paint. We want to have that so that when people come and visit us, it feels comfortable and like a whole. I'll be making my music music out there as well. There won't be guitars everywhere and leads and cables. So next steps for us are get the material loaded, yep. build shed, yep. clear out the buyer. Yep. I think you'll be making a few trips to the sky tip Yes. and build a log store. That's quite a long list already even before we start on the buyer. This so. is a big project, yep. a big big project. But you're welcome to join us on this journey. I'll drink to that. All over the highlands and islands are countless settlements that were forcibly cleared of their inhabitants during a notorious period of Scottish history, the Highland Clearances. This deserted glen is one of those settlements. The people here were evicted in 1830 and forced to travel to Nova Scotia, Canada to start their lives over. The oldest members of the community were sent to the poorhouse on Skye. I was very generously offered permission to metal detect this land and quite honestly I was in two minds whether or not to do it given the history of the area. I decided after a great deal of thought to go ahead with it but with the intention that if I was to find anything of historical interest I'd give it to a local museum or better still try my best to reunite the items with any existing family members that I could find. I've done similar things with artefacts in the past and it's made a positive difference to those families. My view is that it's better to save any remaining artefacts from rotting away in the acidic soil and thus removing with them any further information that could potentially add to the history of the people and of the place. So to be clear, this isn't a treasure hunt. It's a search for social history with a view to finding a better understanding of the full story. I'm here in the north of the island today in an absolutely beautiful surrounding. It's quite a barren landscape now, but it wasn't always like that. There was a lot of people here at one point, but unfortunately this area was part of the Highland Clearances. The other thing is this area is a Viking stronghold. All the villages around here are named with the Viking names. I'd just like to add that this permission was given to me by someone contacting me through the channel. A big shout out to the person that gave us permission here. We really appreciate it. You know who I'm talking to. Now let's get digging. As you can see, there's ruined buildings everywhere. Now I have checked and this is not scheduled, so it is okay to detect here. But as I say, if I find anything that relates to the families that used to live here, I'll do everything I can to get it back to those families. So let's have a look around, see what we can find. The area is just so vast, I don't even know where to start, but I guess I just have to, well, start. Well, the first find is eyes only. I'm assuming it's not going to be whole, but to me, this looks like a bottle. Now, I have got permission to dig here, so this is fine. 
pretty sure this isn't going to be a hole. <coughs> and I'd be pretty wrong. This isn't a bottle dig, I'm metal detecting, but that's a drippy lippy three part mould Victorian bottle. And the first bottle I found on Sky. Doesn't have anything on it, but it's certainly got a lot of age. That's amazing. Here's the imprint, look. That's crazy. I can't believe I just found that right away. This is my first non-ferrous signal. Lots of iron here, as would be expected. This is a 14, so that's a nice signal to check out. Is it this thing? Yes, it is. And what is this thing? I have no idea. Actually, I do. It's just a piece of lead. Just found this. It's not a bottle, it's not metal. It's a horn of something. Looks like it's been here for a while. It's quite cool that. Okay, I've dug a plug out. It was a bit of a messy signal. I think that's a coin. Yeah, that is a coin. Um, I don't think it's got a great deal of age. It's very corroded. Clean that up with my spray bottle. I'll put it in my uh, pouch and look at it later. The wind's picking up, so I'm getting between the wind and you. Hope you can hear properly. Oh, I think that that is a really, really old button. Yeah, look. Little shank there. This is someone's button, like almost worn right through. In another 40 years or so, that would be completely gone. Not much to it, but that's what it is it's a button. Okay, I got another signal, dug it out, and, aha, I think it's this, yeah, oh, may have some detail on that, oh, I think it's a wee button, but I think that this button's got a bit more detail on it, I can see some detail on that, it's a little thistle, look at that, I'm sure I'll put a better picture up, that's a lovely little thistle in there. The land here is scarred by an ancient farming method known as rig and furrow. This was used right back to the early medieval period, possibly before, but this example is more likely from around the 18th century. On Sky, these drainage ridges are known as lazy beds. <laughs> it's a bullet. Back on the theme, it's another bullet. This time a whole case. There you go. It's <laughs> definitely a theme at this part. There's been a lot of shooting going on. It's another bullet. I started detecting right at the top of that hill. I thought I'd come down here and just check it out as well. I was finding a few bits and bobs, but nothing amazing. The wee button was really nice, but aside from that, not much. And this place is absolutely enormous. Look at it. I'm just walking out to the point now because I saw some flat bits that looked quite good down there. But then if you look on the other side of the river as well, it's all buildings over there as well. It's such a huge settlement. It's a 
face off. This is a dog's ball. Why? I have no idea, but I'm sure Jack Spaniels will appreciate it. I just found this. It's just a handle from like a cupboard or something. But then I saw this. What's that? I thought it was a stone. It isn't a stone. This is, in fact, the vertebra of a minky whale, which is pretty cool. Can't say I've ever found a piece of whale's spine before. Well, as you saw, I walked out to the sea and uh, didn't find much, <laughs> apart from bullets. So I'm walking back to the green area I was at before where I found the coin and the uh, button, so the older things. I want to go back there now and see what else I can find, if anything. Let's do that. Ah, it's another coin, cool. Be gentle. I think that that's Victoria. <laughs> That's me done, I really enjoyed that. Okay, so I didn't find loads and loads of things, but that doesn't matter. The point in this was to see if I could find anything at all, and I did, and hopefully I'll get some details off that button that can tell me more about the story. So I hope you enjoyed watching it, and now I've got to walk all the way back to the car, which is quite far, but hey, I'm not gonna get there yakking, let's get going. On my way back to the car, I got chatting to a friendly chap that farms the land here. He explained to me that the reason I hadn't found too much was probably because a few years ago the old settlement had already been detected. I'd like to add, the chap that gave me permission in the first place didn't know about this. So there I was deliberating over the moral standpoint of detecting here, when in fact, someone had already comprehensively detected the area anyway. Oh well, at least that explains it. Still, there's a lot of ground to explore and search here, so hopefully it'll be a case of better luck next time. If you are a landowner on Sky or the Western Highlands, please do get in touch because we'd definitely be interested in detecting or bottle digging on your land. My car is surrounded by moors. I had to climb in the other side to get in because there's one right there by the window and it wouldn't move. Check this out. Oh, well, right up against the side. Couldn't get in the car. Oh well, at least I'm not behind the car so I can reverse out. Right, I'm back home now and in my finds pouch. <laughs> and the little dog doesn't know about it yet. Surprise him. What's this? What's this? Ready. Catch. Oh. <laughs> what you got? Can I have it? No. It's Jack's now. Happy doggy. Can I have it? No. He's off. Well, I'm quite excited today because we got some post. I know what this is, but Willie doesn't because I kept it as a surprise from you. Okay. I've been chatting on Instagram to an illustrator. She got commissioned by a beer company to make a label for them and she wanted like a snowy scene with a cozy little cottage and she'd been watching our videos and she did the cottage based on the Skylife cottage, which is really cool. We got chatting and we decided to do a print swap. So she sent us a print of that and I sent her some prints of my work as well. So this is what she sent us. There's a little note there which has got some really cool mushroom illustrations on I think that's gonna go on my studio wall and she also sent a little comic that she's done which is a story of coffee's journey to your cup which I think is aimed at me because she knows I like a cup of coffee <laughs> yeah and here's the print you open it oh I thought you were gonna do the honors well I open it you want me to open it you can open it okay I'll open it I'm gonna open it folks well I've seen it should I drum roll Ta -da! It's beautiful, isn't it? How cute is that? That is absolutely beautiful. Clearly the cottage has got the yeah. two chimneys and even the bench at the front, look. Yeah. The forest over there that we can see just now looking out our window. Yeah. The snowy mountains, because I think when she did it, that's when we had all that snow. So that was in our videos at the time. Wow, so that's amazing. That's an artwork that was inspired by these videos in a way. That's yeah. kind of cool. I like that. <laughs>
If you want to see more of her work, her name is Savannah Storm on Instagram and you can go over to her page if you follow the link in our video description below because we'll put it down there. Go check out her work, it's really really lovely stuff. That's going to take pride of place in our living room, we'll get that framed won't we? Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you very much for doing that and for sending it to us, it's very kind. Behind us is our buyer building, which we're going to convert. However, in order to convert it, we have to get all the stuff that's in there out. And the only way we can do that is to build a shed to put it all in. And if it falls down, it's his fault. So let's get measuring. We're all measured up. Before we order the items, we've got to make sure we're getting the most out of what we're ordering so we're not going to get too much. So I think the maths is going to be my job. Put my yep. trusty math A level to good use. Let's go and do that. Let's do that. Last summer we did a collaboration dig with Nicola White, the Thames mudlark and artist. Our version of the dig is already out on Dirty Secrets of Scotland, but her version came out today and you can go and check that out over on her channel and I recommend you do because she's a very talented artist and she's an amazing mudlark as well, the queen of the Thames. The link to her channel and the video will be in the description below. Also on the dig I found a broken cod bottle and I decided to cut it down and present it to Nicola because we really appreciated her working with us. This is me cutting down the cod bottle back in Fife. I found this bottle in the dig with Nicola White and I said to her I'd cut it down and give it to her as a gift. So that's what I'm going to do next. And there you go, that's the cut made. Quite happy with that. Nice and neat. Now to sand it down. Here it is. Giving it a wee bit of a wash, but there's no point in doing it too much just now because uh, we're going to clean a layer anyway. So here we go. First is 60 grit. I used to use 100 grit to start with, but I've started using 60 because it's slightly quicker. You do risk little chips, but it's a risk I'm prepared to take for, you know, an extra half an hour of my life. <laughs> here we go. Okay. I stopped filming and I'm glad that I did because that took about an hour and 15 minutes. I've got it to here and that's great, that's, I've taken away all the saw marks and whatnot, so I'm happy with that and now go down to 100 grit sandpaper. But before I do that, I just want to take the edges off a little bit and the way I do that is like this. Final thing to do is just to polish the top now with this glass polish on this wheel. Let's do this. There we have it, time for a clean up and it's done. And here it is, in all its pictorial glory, with St Andrews on the cross there. 
and you can actually see the bubbles through the top, look. Isn't that cool? So there you go, that's for you Nicola. Thanks so much for joining us in Scotland for a dig. We really, really enjoyed it. that has been watching our videos. If you have enjoyed this, please do think about liking, commenting and subscribing to our channel. It really helps us out, it's free and... It's just a really cool thing to do. <laughs> also, you can give us a little share on social media because you never know, your friends might like this channel too. If you feel like contributing to my coffee and cake habit, then you can do so on our Ko-fi page. We use it for the occasional coffee, but we also use it to go towards funding this channel. Speaking of funding the channel, also, if you wanted to, you could become a patron of Living the Sky Life, and you can do that over on Patreon.com. In return, you will receive behind-the-scenes footage and also videos that we don't put on the YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching, we really hope you enjoyed this video, and... See, see you next, next week! week. Her name is Savannah Storm on Instagram and I'm making lots of rustling noises, which is not good. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. We'll not drop it on the floor. Don't drop on the floor. <laughs> twice. Don't drop on the floor twice. <laughs> we'll not put that bit in. Gravity is your enemy, isn't it? It really is, yeah. As beautiful as this is, you'll always get numpties coming down and getting legless. Thanks again for watching. We really hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see, see you next. Oh, sorry. Do that again. I got it wrong. That's not the sea pops, that's just a puddle. <laughs> what was that phrase that made me laugh on TV? You look as pale as a Scotsman's We're leaving our suburban life, moving over the sea to sky. Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see when we're living the sky life. Live in the sky life. If you click on the left icon, you can subscribe to Living the Sky Life. If you click on the right icon, it'll take you back to our very first episode.